From the Chicago Sun-Times newsroom, I'm Natasha Karecki, and this is Off Message, our weekly political talk show. Joining me today is columnist Mary Mitchell, our columnist Mark Brown, and Springfield Bureau Chief Dave McKinney is joining us from Springfield. We had the State of the State and the State of the Union this week. Let's just jump into the State of the State. Illinois is making a comeback. Mark, why don't you give us a little bit of an impression of what your takeaway was. The governor says we're in the middle of a comeback. I'm just not sure people out there are picking up on this yet. I understand that that's the case he's going to have to make to get reelected, but uh, you know, starting in your state of the state speech to start convincing people of that, it's a heavy lift, as they say in politics. Right. Dave, did you have some of the opinion that this was kind of stump speech? Well, yeah, clearly. I mean, because Quinn was targeting a lot of his uh, constituency there, talking about raising the minimum wage, talking about you know, increasing the earned income tax credit. So all those things targeting low-income voters. But I agree with Mark that his Achilles heel in this election is the, the state's economic climate. The Republicans, for once, have, have an issue that is pretty potent. I mean, all you have to do is look at the uh, state unemployment rate. In December, it was 8.6%. And there were only three states in the country that had worse unemployment rates than Illinois. How does that square with his proposal to raise the minimum wage in Illinois? We've seen the uh, walkouts by the fast food workers, for example, in Chicago and across the country. I mean, you know, you're talking over a million Illinoisans who are considered minimum wage employees. And so, you know, just in terms of, of a constituency, those folks are all Quinn's people and they're spread all over the map. And so he's targeting those people, clearly. Is this a way that Quinn can differentiate himself. I, I don't really see it that way. It is an issue that was that was percolating under the surface for a very long time. He has to have something that's his. I am the guy who really looks after the little person, you know, and the hard working American. I'm I'm different than the than the rich guys or the people who are um, conservatives. That that he needed that. It's part of a national strategy by the Democratic Party right. from the president on down and, and we've really got a real class struggle type election coming up here, especially if, if Bruce Rauner is the Republican nominee. Dave, news this week that there's a proposal by Madigan to uh, cut the corporate tax rate. Is this a way, f again, for Democrats in Springfield to say, look, we're business friendly? Well, I mean, first and foremost, I would say that this effort by the Speaker is rooted in the politics of maintaining, you know, if not a, a majority, then a supermajority in the Illinois House. He's basically, you know, robbing the Republicans of part of their argument. And, and what's interesting about this is this is a proposal that, that was not run by the governor before he gave his State of the State speech, and Quinn has been silent on this issue. So, I mean, it's not as if they're out there beating the drum for this. Quinn has been quiet for months now about what his plan is on whether or not to roll back or extend the uh, temporary income tax uh, increase, both for individuals and corporations. Why do you think that is? Well, because it's the third rail for, in effect for him. If he's out there advocating for this tax increase, that gives Republicans, you know, on top of the of you know what the Republicans would argue are are the massive job failures under Quinn, it would it would be you know, really tough for Quinn to deal with. Mark, can you talk a little bit about what were the strengths of the speech? He has accomplished a few things, and he gets to take his victory lap on that. But over the past five years, we've rebuilt one hard step at a time, and we've been getting the job done. When he became Illinois. governor, now he called it Illinois' darkest days, and I, you know, I don't know. When he took over for Bl Rod Blagojevich, the state was in a, in a bad way on a lot of levels, and that was at, you know, at the height of the recession also. And so if you look at where we were then and where we are now, governmentally at least, I think we've made some progress. He, he has been good about taking on tough issues and trying to come up with some solution. He stepped up now. Including same-sex marriage and pensions. And, and, and you got to give governor, the governor some credit for one thing. I, I, I disagree. I think it was darkest days in Illinois when he took over. I think people were very disgusted with politics. But um, if you listen to the Republicans now, they say that Illinois is now in a death spiral. Yeah, well, but it was in a death, it was it's continuing in that spiral. And I think when once you get in a spiral, you got to work your way back up. And that's what I think Quinn has tried to do without a lot of assistance. In Illinois, it took him a very, very long time to even come up with a measly little plan to deal with the pension problem. He had a, a, a rough, you know, Rode a hole, we used to say. That, that's what he had. Mm -hmm. And now, the little victories that he's had, the little progress that's been made, that's what he tried to put forward. I, I almost saw it like, as mimicking uh, President Obama's speech. And I, and I find that, so I'm most intrigued by this, what, this move of Madigan's, because mm -hmm. the one thing, you know, that, that 
I felt Quinn has needed to do is somehow change this Republican narrative that Illinois is right. so bad for business. And the whom here comes in Madigan behind him with this big, bold move of having the state corporate income tax, uh, you know, I'm... I'm surprised that Quinn wasn't thinking what, more along those lines. Is that what Madigan was doing during Quinn's speech yesterday, Dave? Because people were going nuts on Twitter noting that he was he was looking down the entire time and didn't appear to be paying attention, but maybe he was just reading the remarks. Looking down, probably smirking, you know. He knew what was he, he knew what was in the uh, can and ready to be fired. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mary, let's go back to you were just talking about uh, some of the similar you think there are some similarities thought, here you know, with I Obama's was, speech. Well, you know, the, 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 the most glaring one, of course, is at minimum wage. But Americans overwhelmingly agree that no one who works full time should ever have to raise a family in poverty. What I really got from the State of the Union speech was that if he's going to get his agenda done, that he would have to take executive action. That a lot of his supporters have asked him to do that all along. Well, now he's willing to do that. Was he clear in, in what he wants to accomplish in the next year? Well, I think at least you knew where he was coming from. We're going to do boom, boom, boom. Like it or lump it, that's what we're going to do. For a lot of Americans, they want to see that right now. They want to see, you know, he's fighting the image just like Quinn is fighting a, a negative image about uh, what's going on in Illinois. President of the United States is facing a negative image when it comes to leadership issues. You know, is he a strong leader? Does he look strong? Part of his image problem, at least from the right, is they think he's too autocratic and he, you know, is doing too much already to get around Congress. And, and you know, you just wonder where they're going to go if he, he was, if he goes too far with these executive orders. Part of the speech is, you know, trying to jumpstart his presidency. Did he accomplish that? Um, I, I think that, you know, people are used to him now being a great speaker and making a great presentation, and that's not what's going to move the American people. Frankly, going back on the campaign trail, so to speak, in order to sell the kind of programs that he brought up in his speech. I don't know for sure if that's going to be a really good idea. I think that can be used as just a, oh, more campaigning. He's just out here campaigning. How do you think Republicans are going to respond to this? I just think it's going to be war. I don't think they're they're going to give give an inch. Yeah, Dave? Well, no, it's, I think it's, it's going to be more of the same. I mean, more gridlock. And I, I don't know that there really is a chance for him to jumpstart a presidency here, as long as the Republicans stay in control of the House. I think, you know, the, the interesting thing this year for, for Obama is whether or not Democrats can continue to hold the majority in the uh, U.S. Senate. You know, that's, that's a big deal for him. And, and if uh, the party loses you know, control there, that's, it's a major setback. You know, it's a setback for the party. Okay, great. Well, we're running out of time, so thank you very much for joining me this week, and we'll see you next week.